<clears throat> FFORD. Uh, thank you, Dr. Harris. Um, there were um, several things that the auditor uh, said this morning that we would certainly agree with. One of them is that uh, the rules and regulations that govern the reporting of student data are very complex. They are very legally complex. Another is that there are two sides to every story. Um, what I want to talk about for a minute is this question of whether a student could properly be withdrawn because he or she was repeatedly absent, a failure of attendance, or whether they could only be withdrawn if there were charges and a finding of truancy. I will tell you that this report is, to the best of our knowledge, the first time that any state official, not from the Ohio Department of Education, not from the State Auditor's Office, not from the Attorney General's Office, nowhere, no one has ever applied that interpretation to the EMIS rules. Um, is it the correct interpretation and does it matter? Well, let me talk about whether it matters first. It is uh, hugely important to this inquiry and to the issues that are being investigated by the auditor. A very substantial number of the uh, breaking of enrollment that is at issue here was done because students failed to attend school to be taught. That, that is um, really at the center of this controversy. In most instances where enrollment was broken um, uh, for some attendance related issue, it was simply because the student had been excessively absent, hadn't come to school to be taught. It uh, would be unusual, actually, for it to be because the student had actually been formally charged in juvenile court with truancy and a finding made. That doesn't happen often in any school district. I think you heard the auditor say that it has been years since the Cleveland School District even filed a truancy charge. Um, uh, so it is very important. Uh, is the auditor correct? Um, I have a great deal of respect for the auditor and the work that he's trying to do, but I will tell you that there is strong and very fundamental disagreement on this point. First, let's look at the plain language of EMIS. Uh, and Brian, would you hand out for everyone um, pages 40 and 41 of the EMIS manual? And I will ap apologize to all of you if I bog this down a little bit, but I know you want uh, to understand this, so um, we're going to just give you a couple of things. Um, uh, what my colleague is um, passing out and others are passing out are actually pages 40 and 41 of the EMIS manual. And if you haven't gone online to look to, at the EMIS manual, I would encourage you to do it. If you really want to understand well, what, what some of this is about, you try to read that manual. Um, it is extremely complex. It is not um, the most straightforwardly written document. Look at Code 71. These are uh, the codes for permissible reasons to break the enrollment to withdraw a student. Code 71 says withdraw due to truancy slash non-attendance. The Auditor of State said that truancy and uh, non-attendance are the same for purposes of the law. Simply not the case. Um, you are all wordsmiths. You don't put two words with exactly the same meaning together when you write something. That's called redundancy. There is no reason to have the word attendance after a slash if it means the same thing as truancy. I mean this is just the common application of the English language. It is also a legal principle, and the legal principle is um, when looking at a rule or regulation, you try to give meaning to all of the words. Truancy and non-attendance are not the same thing. You can fail to attend without being charged with truancy. Let's look at the purpose of being able to withdraw students and not have them count against a school or a district. The, the principle, which is both embodied in the law and makes common sense, is that schools and districts shouldn't have their instructional effectiveness measured by students who don't attend. If they don't come to school to be taught, the teachers, the schools, and the districts shouldn't be judged 
uh, on how effectively they taught them. It might be appropriate to judge them on whether or not they attend, but they shouldn't have their instructional effectiveness judged by it. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's the, the, simple, um, the simple application of what is the law. This is the manual. There is, by the way, no other guidance in the EMIS manual. The word truancy is not defined uh, in the EMIS manual. And nowhere in the EMIS manual is there a threshold identified for how many days a student can be absent before they can be withdrawn. Now, um, uh, is this uh, just a, a interpretation that we've ginned up for the purpose of responding to this controversy? No. Brian, would you pass out the September 8, 2008 Plain Dealer article? Um, uh, there are, um, sometimes it's helpful to have uh, something that you can look at to demonstrate a point. And in this instance, I'm going to refer to a newspaper article that appeared in the Cleveland Plain Dealer on September 8, 2008. That story looks remarkably like, um, when you read what the story is about, it is really about a study done um, by the Plain Dealer and also uh, by the Ohio Department of Education using exactly the same screen that the state auditor used here looking at the difference between the number of students enrolled in a school who took tests and the number of tests that counted. And if you look at that article, what you're going to find is that it talks about the permissibility of the practice of withdrawing students for non-attendance. It also says, it also says that the Ohio Department of Education confirmed that a student who is absent for 10 or more uh, unexcused uh, absences may be withdrawn. Look at the third page in the highlighted section. It's a, a, a statement attributed to a, an official of the Ohio Department of Education. I would encourage you to ask the Ohio Department of Education <coughs> if it ever said anything publicly or to any school suggesting that what this article said was wrong. I can't find it. No one here at the Columbus City Schools is aware of it. It didn't happen. The truth is that across this state, and certainly in the larger school districts, it has been believed, and it has been the practice, some of which you heard about this morning, um, to evaluate students with a, a large number of absences for the possibility of breaking their enrollment. And so um, the, the position that the Auditor of State has taken is a sharp departure from all prior guidance on this issue, and it's an important issue.